Hello, my name is Dr. Aaron Dishnow, and I'm the inventor of Walk the Web 3D Browsing. In the last tutorial, I showed you how to create uh, 3D building blocks, so you were able to make walls of your building. So in this uh, tutorial, we're going to go through coverings and textures, the way that we put the images on the surfaces of those 3D building blocks and align them and such. So getting started, first thing we're going to do is reload our building from the last tutorial. And once you have it loaded in the editor, all you have to do is right click on any one of the 3D shapes that you've already created and it'll open the edit window. And notice this is where we did the position, the scaling or length, and the rotation of each one of the objects. So if you scroll down, we have covering type. Now in here, you'll see texture, uh, directional texture, glass, and hidden. Now there'll be a couple other settings that are possible on certain 3D building blocks, but they're very specific to those ones. So in this case, these ones are here for most objects. Texture is your basic texture. You're going to put these on the surfaces and it's going to uh, set the setting. You're going to, everything's going to look good. Uh, directional textures are designed to make sure that all sides of the object uh, face the same direction, which I'll demonstrate in a few minutes. Glass becomes like a window so it has kind of a little yellow tint to it but it's a transparency and it has a gloss and reflective surface and then in the end is hidden now hidden boxes and stuff are used for boundaries and let's say you had an area in, in your building that you didn't want anybody to walk into you could put a hidden box there it doesn't have a glare it doesn't have a reflection and it is invisible completely so then you would try to walk there it would bounce right off of it and it would just be a boundary Okay, so let's start with textures. First, if you click the Change Texture button, pops up, open the window, and the window has three different tabs on it. So you have 3D building images, my images, and stock images. Now, stock images are just some ones that we've thrown out there so you have something to work with when you start. Uh, my images will be anything that you have uploaded. So if you're just starting out, that may be blank and then 3D building images will always show you whatever images are already loaded in your scene. So if you have four walls and you want to make them all the same after you've done the first one, instead of hunting for that image again, all you have to do is go back to 3D building images, find the exact same image. Another thing about the window here is when you move your mouse over the top of any one of the textures, it'll tell you the file name that it had when it was uploaded. So makes it easy if you have two images that look very similar that you can select one that uh, is the exact one you're looking for. Okay, so under stock images, I'm going to go with uh, the brick pattern. And first of all, notice the bricks are vertical instead of horizontal. Now, because this is a particular texture, I'm going to move the wall out just a little bit because I want to show you what's actually happening here. So I'm going to bring it away from the other wall. And I'm going to make it a little bit wider so it's not just one for the moment. And notice that on the left side, the bricks are the right direction. On the right side, they're not. Also notice the bricks look smaller. They're a lot lower in height than on the right. These are due to the scaling on the surfaces, but also the directional of the texture. So in this particular case, if we scroll down here, and instead of the texture being a regular texture, we're going to change it to directional texture. First thing note is that it now scaled everything and made it where all the bricks are horizontal. So it took the original image and it rotated it so that left, right, sides, and back are all going to be the same direction of the texture. The top and bottom also align the same direction. Now, you ask, why wouldn't I just do this all the time? Well, when I throw a texture on a surface and I don't pay attention to the direction, it actually renders faster. So your scene will work a little bit faster and a little better. So we don't use them unless we have to. But then when we do, what it actually does is it paints each surface separately and rotates to, to the right direction. Now because of that, we can only do this with six-sided surfaces at this time um, by default. So what happens is it'll paint the six sides, so that's your boxes, your walls, and your floors. Okay. Then the next thing I want to show you is that under Advanced Options, if you go to Show Advanced Options and then scroll down a little bit, there's four settings down here that are important with your textures. One of them is to scale the width and the height. 
Now, depending on which direction your box was rotated, width and height may be vertical or horizontal. It has to do with each surface of every side of an object. So when you change the height or verticalness of a side, what happens is you're actually changing the size of the bricks. So in one case we're making them taller, another case we're making them smaller or narrower. Okay, so you can actually change and stretch an image to be whatever size you want it to be. Now this does work best when you're working with a regular texture opposed to a directional texture because notice even as I change this scale it was changing the face of the object but not the sides. And maybe later in one of our upgrades I'll do some extra work on that and we'll see if we can get it to work on all sides for you. Okay, another thing to note is when you set the scale on the sides to zero that is the default for one-to-one -one ratio. So if I change the setting to scale to one by one, the bricks are the exact same size. Anything less than one, especially in uh, decimal places, are gonna make the bricks smaller. And anything greater than one is going to make them larger. Note, you can go to as large as you want. So as you can see, what it's doing to the various surfaces right there, when I change the scale. Okay. And when I go back to one, we'll be back at normal scale. The other thing that we can do that helps, if you have, let's say, two walls next to each other, and you have them painted with bricks, well, you want the bricks to actually line up, is we can adjust the width or height offset of that graphic image on the surface of the 3D building block. So if I notice if I move it one direction or the other, this one's moving them left and right. This particular one is moving them up or down. So I can adjust the texture on one surface and make it match the texture on another surface so that they go right up end to end and align any graphic lines on the images or anything. When I get it all where I want it to be, all I have to do is click Save Box and now that box is going to have that texture or that image on the surface. Another thing is if you want to use your own custom uh, textures and images. So if I take this box and I come down here, I say I want to change the texture. And notice my images, we'll let them load. And when I click Upload Image, it'll automatically give you the prompt so you can pick an image off of your own computer. And I'm going to pick yellow, uh, well this pattern, red and yellow pattern. This is one I created. Now something I want to tell you about it is if it's a JPG file the images is exactly as you would picture. If you pick a PNG or a GIF file it's designed to automatically try to use a transparency. <coughs> so excuse me. But the background will try to go transparent. So if it has a black background, you may get a, a transparent background instead of the black. So I recommend using JPG files unless you are looking to do a transparency. Another thing is the scale, the size of the pictures. When we render something on here, uh, we have a minimum of 512 by 512 that I recommend. And that is because by default, when you upload an image, you actually get the 512 by 512 is one square unit of a 10 by 10 uh, wall, for example. So natively, when I'm looking at this wall in the background here, 10 units by 10 units is 512 by 512 of a, of a graphic image. Now you would say 512 isn't a very high amount for graphics for some of you that really work with some high intensity graphics or even the fact that we're viewing it on a screen that has uh, uh, 1440 width on it. Basically what happens is you select your image and it changes it on the surface. Well, notice that even though it's 1440, I'm only looking at painting 512 by 512 on a small area of my screen. And the farther I get away, the smaller that size becomes. So 512, when you walk right up to it and you get very close to it, you are still seeing natively a very high quality graphic. And when you upload a graphic, I want to show you this. It's in our settings over here. It's written on the site, but I recommend the 512 by 512. But when I upload a graphic, what I actually do is I'm resizing it in 
keeping four different copies of the image. We keep a thumbnail, which is an 80 by 80. In fact, those are the same thumbnails that you're looking at when you choose which graphic you want to put on the surface. Um, it's also used when you have your graphics setting for your browsing set to low. Uh, when you go to medium size, it's 256 by 256. And full size or high graphics are 512 by 512. Now, I also store the original size graphics. In the future, as computers improve, as the speed improves of everybody's browsing, and the more people get some gaming quality computers with 3D browsing, then I have plans that we may use more of the original images and may be able to go to some higher qualities. Now, the last part is well, actually, we've gone through all those sections of that, and now you're able to decorate and change the textures and coverings on each one of our walls. So I'm going to put this wall back into place on our building. I'm going to set it for negative 49, where it was sitting before. I'm going to set it for one width. I'm also going to set the scaling back to 1, 1 and offset to 0 so I don't need to offset the image. I'll make it right where it came by default. And now we have a wall with an image on it. I'm going to save that box. And now I'm going to do it to the other three walls of the image. So starting here, notice how easy we can just come here. We can go okay, change the texture. 3D building images. Since we already used the image once, the same image will be there for all four sides. Come down here. Oh, I remembered some setting settings from a previous attempt I did at making this video. <laughs> you can find the mistakes if you look hard enough, right? And now I'm going to do the back wall. set the texture of this one same thing load up the textures set the wall save that box and this last one Save that side. And there we have it. We now have four sides with walls that have a texture on the surface. Now, I'm going to point out something that's going to be the next tutorial. But notice how the corner of the two images blink back and forth as we move around. Notice it's the end of one wall and the face of this other wall. It's because we aligned them up to be the exact same location. So in the next tutorial, I'm going to walk you through how we can correct that issue. Uh, thank you for watching this tutorial, and if you'd like more information on this tutorial or any of the others, please see www.walktheweb.com. Thank you very much.